Brian, welcome to the show. Again, we thank God you can view the show, whether it's in your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, or any other area in your home. We're excited to bring you that ministry present. We want to say to you uh, happy holidays and uh, season greeting, but we also want, want to say to you that those individuals that have relatives, friends, and that they have visitors coming, uh, make sure you bring your relatives and friends, and even the tourists, bring them down to the Lower Night Ward and see the area that was highly devastated, but it is in the process of being restored. Uh, I just talked to somebody that just brought some people down uh, recently, and they're, they're saying uh, the area is coming back. Besides uh, uh, the high grass and the blighted, uh, th th there's still a, a move for restoration in that area. And so we want people to know that New Orleans is not 100% back and that every citizen has a right to, to get back in their own homes. Uh, again, uh, we encourage you, keep on emailing us, keep on calling us, and we'll uh, talk about some of those subjects that you are, are already talking about that we should mention. Again, we thank God for our co-host, uh, the Reverend Darrell Smith, also known as DK Smith, 940 AM on your radio dial. He has a saying that goes like this. Well, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., I'll take you home in style, with a smile. And I say that because a lot of times uh, uh, I, I, he has his finger on the pulse of what's taking place locally uh, on this, in the city, but also he has his finger what's taking place uh, nationally, internationally, and even globally. T tell us how you have a well, global, global... that's because that ministry's TV show is uh, on YouTube, and if you're online, uh, your desktop, your laptop, your notebook, or even in your smartphone, uh, just go to YouTube and search DAP Ministries TV show and you'll find this and uh, many other shows that we put in uh, online. So that's online content and we know that online content goes international. Uh, and so for those who are away, but yet we like to say they're near, they can know what's going on. And I'm glad to always say about the Ninth Ward, which of course uh, I was born in the little Ninth Ward. And we I know was too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we got to remember that that and in fact every so often you see all around the city blighted houses you see tall grass and everything i live uptown so we see that and by being co-chairperson of a neighborhood association we want to make sure that that is not something that people will get used to you know we, we're tired of it now oh yeah oh yeah yeah that is, the strange thing is um during this holiday season you see lights some people may have lights some people may not but still you know it's good to, it's good just to see not only the festivity, but just the neighborhoods. We know? don't want to see the blight, though. No, 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 no. In fact, at night you can't see the blight. <laughs> if you think about it. You uh, still see the high grass. Yeah, well, just the high grass is there, and you're right about that. Yeah. Um, also remind you that uh, Louisiana Freeman Missionary Baptist General Association, the youth department is having a skate party. It's going to be December the 27th. It's going to be at Skate Country on Airline Highway, and it's from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., and you can... Well, purchase a ticket at the door and everything while you're there. But uh, we want to acknowledge that from the Louisiana Freeman Missionary Baptist General Association and uh, Reverend Lewis Jones, president, and I'm not sure who's the youth president, but we do know they can contact yeah, yeah. Reverend, um, Reverend Palmer. Palmer, yeah, jo yeah Joshua, Joshua Palmer. Palmer, youth president. Right, and so I'd like to thank Sister Tremaine Davis for passing on the information as well. But we do have a guest that I'd like to introduce. Introduce our guest. I'm yes, excited to, to yes, hear yes. about our guest, especially because um, she has a book out. She has a book out. I share it like this. Hey, there it is right there. It's called How to Become a Publicity Magnet in Any Market TV, via TV, Radio, and Print. And she talks about five steps to win. And your personal and professional life is the number one seller. We're going to talk about that. And she comes in the person of Havilah Malone. So we say welcome to that Ministry TV show. Hi. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me. I'm excited. We're I'm excited. Excited. We're excited. <laughs> and sounds excited. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the book, and 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 why you're telling us about the book. Tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. certainly. So I am Louisiana, born, and raised. All right. Actually, I'm um, right out of Kenner, Louisiana. Okay. And okay. Uh, went to the University of New Orleans here in the city. And you know, I've always had a passion and love for broadcast media. Um, I actually even used to work here in these studios back <laughs> in my uh, college days. So, it's a blessing. Yeah, it's like coming back home. So, yeah. um, but I, you know, I, I pursued media. You know, coming right out of college, something that I absolutely loved. I got experience behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera.
program or so. Um, I've done projects with like American Movie Classics. I've done field producing with Travel Channel. Um, I had a television show on Style Network and was even the spokesperson for the Home Shopping Network and QVC for uh, Hewlett Packard products. So this is some really amazing things. Don't forget, I need to get an autograph. <laughs> 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 I mean, for some sure. of those shows are, are, are shows that I watch and I love, uh, you know, the Travel Channel and stuff like, oh, you, 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 you're you fascinating. Yeah, yeah, we did a special here um, in New Orleans and the Travel Channel was here. So, yeah, I was really fortunate to be able to work with them um, during that that time. So, yeah, just, you know, there's so many things that happen and opportunities and doors that open and it's about being able to move forward and take advantage of those opportunities and sometimes moving past our own fears to do the things that we really want to do in life. And so um, I also big portion of my career was also in corporate America, so I worked for Hewlett Packard directly as a district sales manager, managing about a $160 million business for them. Mm -hmm. And so it was a good, great experience to be able to not only get the business aspects of things and understand how that worked, but also having my television background and understanding how that worked. So I brought together all of that knowledge and as far as my personal journey of self-development and progression and brought that together and put this in the book. So it's really about helping you know, entrepreneurs, business leaders, you know, people who are role models who have a product, a service, a message, something that they need to get out to the world that can really make a difference in somebody's life, how to use publicity and how to use the media to be able to do that. But first, before you can even get to that step, sometimes we got to get out of our own way. Well, here's something that, that interests me. I can see that you're educated in the sense that you see the necessity of going to college. Mm -hmm. Our young people want to fast track and probably get at the level that you're, you're at, but some of them don't want to go to them. We, we say pay their dues and, and learn mm -hmm. what they should be doing. And so they just want to happen and say, hey, I'm just going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. And look, it, mm -hmm. for some people that can work, but what would you advise for an uh, upcoming uh, individual, young, young, young adult, uh, maybe in junior high to high school? What would you encourage them to do? I, I am a huge proponent of education. I, even in school, I was trying to like fast track and get out of school too. I actually graduated from college when I was 19. What? So I was I was like I want to get out into the world and I want to you know get to working and doing the things that I want to do. So you know I took steps to be able to get out of school early, and. But getting an education and a proper education is something that's so important because, like they say, knowledge is power. Well, it's also it's applied knowledge is power. But you have to have that basis to start from. Um, there's so many things that are available to people, so many resources, tools, opportunities that are available. But if you don't know about it, if, if you're you not educated on it. it right. How are you going to take advantage of you're that? Missing, you're missing the opportunity that's already afforded Absolutely. for you. Uh, and even beyond like traditional school, I think some of the most important education you can do is through watching leaders, through watching people who have done things. You see somebody who is going down the path that you want to go read about their story, mm. find out what steps they took, you know, the highs, the lows of their journey, because there's so many valuable lessons in that. Read books like Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. There's so many principles that people have who have walked the road or gone down that road, they've put into books. They've given you the tools, but you have to pick them up and use them. You have to pick them up and read them. So I think even beyond the traditional education, which that's extremely important because it gives you foundational things, but study people who are successful because there's habits, rituals, and things that they do that make them successful. Now, when did you start your career desire? At a, at a young age, or did you decide that this is what you wanted to do when you got maybe 18, 19 years of age? Um, I think as far as kind of being out there, sharing messages, performing, you know, that kind of stuff was always in me. I mean, I used to even be at home and I'd be in front of the mirror with my, you know, my brush or, you know, whatever I could just yeah, grab. And, <laughs> exactly. I think we all did that. Yeah, exactly. Or I'd watch movies and I was like, oh my goodness, like one day, you know, I want to do that or I want to be that. And so I think, especially when we're young, we have huge imaginations and we just, mm -hmm. we dream big and we just, it's like, okay, one day and we start making these plans and we start moving forward, but it's like somewhere along the lines, we stop dreaming so big. We stop pursuing and going after and almost start living by other people's expectations for our lives. And I think when I made my shift into corporate America and kind of left behind broadcast media, I feel like I did that. Um, I, and let me preface this with, I feel like every part of our journey, because life is a journey, mm -hmm. 
It's there to serve you. It's there for now, is a that reason. information in your book? Oh, absolutely. I, I sound like it. Sound like you. I'm not saying you're a philosopher, but you have a, 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 a air of a philosophy of wisdom mm -hmm. in in your presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, along with that, I'm thinking because way back when, in the little ninth world, when I was growing up, God, I don't even believe I'm saying this, but I was like 10 or maybe 10 years old, and like you say, be an actor. I said, back when I was 10 years old, I was going to be an actor, you know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I even had it figured out. I was going to be making $10,000. Back then, it was a lot of money, you know, and, and all like that. And I told my mom and my dad and my, my dad, and I had dreams of doing that. Mm. But like you said, I won't say reality hits, but life comes along. But you know what? You're still an actor. That's, right. That's exactly what I was going to say, yeah. I, I'm still in the <laughs> media <laughs> business. You're, in a, you're a character actor. I'm a character, yeah, yeah, you yeah. May, You may not be and in so, star role. Let's put it like this. I'm not making the $10,000, <laughs> but it still may come. But what I wanted to say was this. Back then, a little curly-haired kid had aspirations and looking at it like that and all like that. And from then until now, a lot has changed because the youth today, you say a book, I, I want to read no book. I, they want to do things on the internet. They want to do things on the, uh, the, the tablets and everything. They don't pick up a book. And I think that's one of the shortcomings because library is still open. Library has so lots of books and everything. And um, I just want to say your reflection on that, how modern day the, the transformation of, yeah. of people mm -hmm. reading ebooks instead of the old fashioned oh, pick certainly. up paper. And, mm -hmm. and that's one of the beautiful things. I mean, with technology and with technological advances, it does make things so much easier to get. Um, it puts things at your fingertips as far as resources. Even this book is available on an ebook. <laughs> so you can download that online. Um, and, and even there's a lot of versions of books that are in audiobooks. So even if you're mm -hmm. always on the go, you don't have the time to like sit down and read, which you, you should still take some time to sit down and read. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing if you can read. And look, I, I teach at the seminary. One thing I can relate to is we're blessed that we can read the Bible in our own native language. Mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, the Bible has been translated in all other native languages. Right. So the, the, the art is communicating the languages to come to that one same goal, mm -hmm. that God is God. Amen. You know, and, and, and it takes a lot because a lot of people read different, you know, everybody don't interpret the scripture the same, right. you know, but the scripture won't change for our pr private interpretation. Yeah, no, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah. That message is constant yeah. and it is always there. That is so true. So yeah, you definitely do need to um, take the time to take in that information, to take in that knowledge, because once you have it, then you can move forward and apply it mm -hmm. in so many different aspects of your life. And so, you know, that's what, in the book, it really breaks down and helps you to step back into that day when you, you were 10 years old, mm -hmm. to the day that you had those big dreams and aspirations and figure out, why am I not doing that now? And what do I need to do to be able to start moving in that direction? We've got to stop you right there. We're going to go to a break. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more about, I don't want you to give all the information of your book, but I just want you to get some tidbits about, about individuals, especially young people that may be wanting to start out in their career and, and tell them some of the ups and downs of what they need to do before it's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to a break and we're going to come back. We're going to talk to an uh, expiring author and um, entrepreneur, uh, uh, system alone. She's going to uh, encourage us. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Poor nutrition today will increase Sarah's chances of anemia. Add to her health care costs. Sick days. Even stunt her ability to learn. And the thing is... Sarah's not even born yet. Get proper nutrition before it's too late. Call or visit WIC. WIC provides nutrition information, healthcare referrals, even food. Your child has you, and you have WIC. Mrs. Johnson, good to see you again. Uh, this is Mike. You can trust him. He looks just...